Hello and welcome. Today I have NACC curator Rob Kogan and our T28 Super Heavy Tank and I want to address one of the most common questions that I see on the channel after the T28 videos that I've posted as well as around on social media and that is what this tank is actually called. A really common misunderstanding is that the T28 becomes the T95 with the outer tracks on but that's not the case. I can lay to rest what's a T28, what's a T95 and the answer is they're the same vehicle exact same tank. There's no difference between them whatsoever. Uh, so this vehicle originally designed as the T28 heavy tank. Of course we know it was designed uh, for assaulting the Siegfried line or the Western Wall in Europe. About a year after it was its initial development, so we're talking about 1944, the Ordnance Department decides, hey, instead of calling it the T28 heavy tank, let's classify it as a gun motor carriage. That decision was made based on the fact that this vehicle did not have a turret, which that's that's a very controversial uh, reason. We have a lot of discussion. Do tanks actually need to have a turret to be a tank? I would argue no. It's actually the doctrinal purpose of the vehicle. Uh, but go not, not detracting from that. Whole another video. Yes, a whole another video for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so they reclassified the T95 because there already were other vehicles with the T20 classification, the gun motor carriage. The gun motor carriage normally belonged to the tank destroyer force. That week. So like the M18, uh, the M36, the M10 tank destroyers, they were actually gun motor carriages were their vehicle classifications. So fast forward about another year after that, the war's already over, and again, someone looks at this vehicle and says, well, it's not really a gun motor carriage. It's not designed to engage other tanks, so it's not really a tank destroyer. And American tank destroyer philosophy meant that your vehicle was fast and lightly armored. I think you would agree. This is not fast nor lightly armored. So that, that point was, fair, was fairly moot. And so they decided to go back to the T-28, but instead of calling it a heavy tank, because by this point we now have the M-26 Pershing coming out as a heavy tank, they classified, they gave it its own category as the T-28 Super Heavy Tank. And that is the official last designation given to this vehicle. So there's no, no doubt about it, the official name of this vehicle is a T-28 Super Heavy Tank. Now if you call it a T-95, I'm going to know what you mean. But if you tell me, no, you're wrong, this is not a T-28, this is a T-95, I'm going to have to tell you, no, you're, you're, I'm sorry, you're, in, you're incorrect, they're the same vehicle, there's no difference. T-28, T-95, same vehicle. It's really important to remember when you're playing a video game that's based off of historical information that you should go to the history first and foremost. So while world's, games like World of Tanks and War Thunder get to introduce the T-28 to tons of people who might not have found it before, um, a lot of times video games will edit the information about the vehicles to better fit into the game for balance and playability or even for visuals. So enjoy the video games, but read a book. Go read a book. If you want to find out more about this vehicle, uh, Firepower by R.P. Hanukkah is an awesome source of the information. So. Go ahead and check that out. I'll link that down in the links below, as well as the channels for the NACC social media and YouTube. If you want to see some more of these awesome beasts being moved around and placed for permanent display, and like and subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time for some more tanks and armored action.